Hello everyone, and thanks for joining us. Our webinar today is part of the Site Experience webinar series. My name is Norbert. I'm the Student Outreach Coordinator for Site Experience Internship Program. And I'm here today with Piper, our Marketing and Communication Specialist, and Becky, the Site Experience Internship Program Director. Thanks for having me, Norbert. Glad to be here. Hey, everybody. <laughs> so our topic for today is Student Guide to Site Experience. And at the end of this webinar, you will have a full understanding of how to use this program like a pro and increase your odds of finding your dream internship. Quick heads up before we go into our topic of discussion today. We will be recording this webinar as part of the Site Experience webinar series, and we will, we will post our recording on sitechemist.org. Piper has some questions that will help us to dive into the program, but we encourage you to participate by sending us the question through questions we know that Becky will let us know what's going on. Awesome. Great. Thanks, Norbert. So before we dive into our topic of discussion today, uh, we're going to do a quick poll to best understand how familiar everyone is with the SciTech Experience program. So if you wouldn't mind pulling that up and launching our first, first poll today. All right, so our options here are, uh, we've got the, I am a returning applicant. We've got, I've set up a profile, but haven't found an internship, internship yet. And I've looked at the site, but haven't signed up yet. Or also, I'm totally new to this program. So chime in if you have a response, we'll give it a few seconds. Okay, great, let's see the results. So it looks like we've got 50%, 50% say I've set up a profile, but haven't found an internship yet. And 50% says that they're totally new for this. Well, that's cool. That's why you're here, and we're really glad that you joined us today. Um, so with all of that in mind, Norbert, let's start with the basics. Let's go over um, by covering what exactly Site Experience is. So thank you, Piper. That's a good question. So Site Experience is a state-funded program that connects college students pursuing degrees in science, technology, engineering, and math, which is commonly known as STEM, to internships in small Minnesota companies. The program started in 2012 to build and retain STEM workforce, and we have already placed uh, over 900 plus interns. Last year we placed 208 interns, and this year we're gonna place over 300 interns in our small companies. Site Experience Internships offer students hands-on industry experience, an opportunity to apply their knowledge to real world challenges, and the, site, uh, and the skills they need to bridge the gap between classroom and career. Um, yeah, so that's really impressive, the number that you were able to get. Um, let's go into, forgive me, like the next question, but forgive me, I have to say, with what you've just described, how is SciTech any different from recruiting firms or agencies? Yeah, so Piper, uh, we have specifics for the program that make us different from other recruiting agencies. First off, recruiting agencies have job seekers in their database that they connect to different jobs whenever jobs that match their skills open. They can call you for an interview with the hiring company or and recruiting agencies don't normally get a fee for making this match successful. Site experience is exclusively for college students and functions differently. We don't make hiring choices and we don't match you up with the company and the program is free for both students and companies. Awesome, okay, thanks for clearing that up. So speaking of companies, what kind of companies and industries are involved with Site Experience? So that's a very good question again. All Site companies are small, mid sized Minnesota companies, that is to say 250 employees or less, mm -hmm. worldwide count. They have to be for profit, registered to do business in Minnesota, and of course, provide hands on experience in STEM fields. All our companies fall within these industries biotech and life sciences, engineering services, IT, and computer technology manufacturing, fuels and energy, agriculture and food science, aerospace and defense. Awesome. Okay, so that's a pretty wide range. Um, all right, so I'm interested. You've got my attention. Let's say I'm a student. How can I get involved in science experience? Yeah, so it's very easy to get involved as a student piper. So both employers and students need to apply to the program in order to participate. We only receive applications submit submitted online at scitechmn.org. So if you apply through uh, other platforms like Handshake, mm -hmm. we're not going to receive that. Everything has to be submitted at SciTechMN.org. 
The program is free for both students and companies, and our application is easy and takes a few minutes. Awesome. Okay, so actually, I'm seeing from our speaker, Becky, that we actually have a question from the audience. So I'm going to read that off now. Um, Audrey asks, I'm from Madison and go to school at North Dakota State University. Can I participate in this program? Oh, wow. That's a very good question, Audrey. It's going to actually be a good transition to our next topic. So we have, this is a state-funded program, and we have eligibility requirements for students. If you're a student and you're looking forward to participate in the program, you need to be a Minnesota resident or attending school in Minnesota. You have to be at least 18 plus years of age in a good academic standing, that means 2.5 GPA or higher. You have to be in a college, junior or senior status. That's credit wise. If you're doing a bachelor's degree, you have to have 60 credits completed already. If you're doing an associate degree or in a community college, you have to be having 24 credit, 24 credits plus. And master's degree students are eligible for the program and you have to be legally eligible to work in the US. That means for international students, you need your OPT or CPT work authorization. Okay, so once a student has looked over this information and they know that they apply and they can check all the boxes, what's next? Are there any specific documents they might need to submit to be approved? Absolutely, my so because we have um, these requirements, we need to be sure that you have them. So we we'll ask you to submit some documents as a proof, and that is your unofficial transcript that shows your name, school name, major, your cumulative GPA and credits, and your courses in progress. You need to have your resume that you can copy and paste. Make sure it's well polished because you're going to need it to make your student profile. And we recommend visiting your career center for resume review before using it for internship search. We have a new state requirement, so you have to attach your, your, your receipt for selective service. And if you're an international student, attach your I-20. You also need a well-crafted personal statement, which is your elevator pitch. And uh, it's going to communicate about who you are, your skills, your interests, and what you're looking forward to achieving from your pros prospective Okay, so before we move on, you mentioned selective service requirement. I have to say that sounds a little intimidating. Can you elaborate more on that? Yeah, so it's not as bad as it sounds. It is a new state requirement that all students who are identified as male at birth needs to register for federal selective service, and all links to registration will be given in the online application at sitekmn.org. All you will need is your last name, your first name, your date of birth, and your social security number. So if you know all that, all that information, it's going to take you seconds to register for selective service. A receipt will be generated that you can download and upload on your, on your application. Awesome. So that's not difficult at all. Yeah. So going forward, if you have all those, mm -hmm. all those documents that we already mentioned, you have to go to our website, go on the student side and click Enroll, Upload all those documents and fill out the information that needs to be filled and then hit submit. Perfect. Okay, so let's see. Norbert, I've registered for site experience. Now what? Does that mean that I'll be matched up with the company right away? No. Oh, unfortunately, Viper. <laughs> we don't do much matching with companies. We don't match you up with the company and we don't make hiring choices. It's up to you to search the job board and reach out to employers of interest. Again, the employer's contacts will be provided along with the job descriptions. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so that's a good point to launch our second poll. Um, so everybody, we want to see how many of you have used the SciTech job board before. Let's get that up there on the screen and we'll give everyone just a few seconds or minutes or whatever to respond. Looks like we've got our responses here. So we've got, what does it say, 50% each? Okay, well, that's great. So both cases, you know, you can learn more from what we're about to talk about then. Um, so with all of that in mind, Robert, let's just real quick walk through the job board search process and what it takes to find employers' contacts. Okay, that's good. So when you've been approved to the program, you're going to receive an email 
And if you can read that email carefully, it's gonna have all the basics of the program. First off, you need to log in into the program. And when you log in, you'll find our job board. Make sure you search the job board and mark all the jobs that are favorites to you by clicking on the term. That way you'll be able to see them the next time you log in. If the job is still open, if the job is still posted on our job site, it's still open. Read through the internship details and you will need to fully understand every detail of the job that you're applying to in order to craft your resume, to craft your cover letter, or even write the email to the hiring manager. Do your homework, review the job details, check the company's website, and make sure you understand every detail. Read their press releases and try to understand their work and culture. Determine if it's a good fit for you and how you're going to present yourself. If you decide that that is the right internship for you, it's your time. Now contact the hiring manager directly by sending them an email, attach your cover letter and your resume again. Okay, so now that we're, we're really getting into the important details that I bet a lot of the students really care to know. So let's talk about what I should include in my initial email to the hiring manager. That's a good question and that's a critical stage of your application. Make sure your email is in a professional tune. Focus on what you have to offer to the company and why you will be a good fit. Compose a well-written professional email and attach a clean copy of your resume and cover letter. If you don't have enough experience, you can talk about your coursework, express your willingness and desire to learn. And of course, your career center people will help you to come up with these uh, resume specifics. Ask for an interview at the end of your, your letter or your email and express an interest in talking to the company about further steps. Perfect. Okay, so then what about other forms of outreach? Um, when is it appropriate, for example, to call the company or to do a follow-up email in case I haven't heard from them? So Piper, you need to understand that these companies are small companies and they're so busy, their, sch their schedules might be tight. Mm -hmm. Give it at least five business days and then do a follow-up email. The key is to be persistent and stay professional. Okay, great. Always good advice, I think, in any situation when looking for a job or an internship. Um, but so, Norbert, moving on, talk to me about the odds of being hired for the program. Okay, so you need to understand that this is a state-funded program, and we are growing every year. Mm -hmm. This year, we're going to support 300 internships statewide, and the, pro the program is only designed for college students going to school in Minnesota who are looking for STEM internships. All these specifics will increase your competitive advantage. And for any internship you apply to through SciTech, you can be sure that only students are going to be applying to the same position. Okay. You're not going to be competing with anybody with many years of experience in the field. And uh, that increases your chances of being hired. Just make sure your SciTech profile looks good. Check our job board regularly. Read our emails. Use our resources on our website and like our social media pages to stay up to date. Great. Do you have any insider advice on how students might be able to increase their odds of being hired? Yeah, so if you're a student and you understand how to use site experience very well, chances are you're gonna learn something through the program. Mm -hmm. First, you need to create an outstanding student profile that showcases your skills and interests. To create a good profile, you need a good personal statement and a well-polished resume. There are resources on our student pages uh, to help you with the resume building. And we're going to do very many webinars that you can follow through to help you build your resume. Your career center also is a good resource for you. So Piper. And uh, the career center personnel can help you publish your resume, write a cover letter, review emails before you send them to, employ to employers. You can also be helped to prepare for phone interview and in-person interviews. We post our jobs every day. So if you have a good site tech profile, search the job board constantly and contact hiring managers, your odds of being hired are really high. Awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna stop you real quick because it looks like we have another question from the audience. Um, this comes from Daniel. He's asking if there's any cost to participate in SciTech's program. So the cost of participation for both students and employers is completely free. Awesome. So you don't have to pay anything to be part of the program. 
you just have to be willing to reach out and grab those opportunities. Perfect. Yeah. And you really can't beat that opportunity. Um, for the sake of addressing it, what should I do if I don't find what I'm looking for on the Site Experience job board? Yeah, so that's very possible that you may not find what you're looking for today, but check back regularly and check out the list of jobs that we send in our email every week. Be, persist be persistent because new jobs are posted every day. And if you can see a job at the board, it's still open, even if uh, it shows the job, the start date has already expired. Mm -hmm. If you can see it, it's open and it's up for grabs, so make sure you reach out to employers and try out your chances. Awesome. Um, so let's talk about the good news. What should I do when I'm hired? Well, if you're hired, congratulations. You've <laughs> yes, landed thanks. an internship. <laughs> now what you need to do is to learn more about the company and the position. Be sure it's what you are looking for and the company is a good fit for you. Remember, you can only do one internship or two per year. So make good fit by making sure the internship is worth your time. Reply to the offer, preferably within 24 hours in a well-written email, stay professional, and take time to set internship goals before you start your internship. It's going to help you to build your profile and your portfolio to update your resume after your internship is done. Perfect. Um, so Becky's telling me that we have another question from the audience here as well. Um, this from, comes from Jordy. And he wants to know, when do internships occur typically? So this is... A whole year program and internship it runs from September 1 through other 31st. Our companies hire students for part time internships in the fall and spring semester. So you can apply for part time internships during the semester, and you can also be sure to apply for internships like summer internships on the spring semester. Check our job board regularly and read our emails that we send out every week. Perfect. Okay, so we've gone over a lot of these really good details, um, but I bet some of these interested students are probably wondering what they can expect if they had an internship through this experience. Can you talk to us about what a side tech experience internship is like and maybe how a student can make the most out of it? Yeah, so the best way to find out how our, how our internships are is to check our blog, check our website, read our stories about what, inter what students have been doing. But one thing, all psychic internships are designed to give you hands-on experience in your STEM field of study. We do not accept positions that primarily involve administrative work, marketing, sales, production, and such. So yeah, if you go to our website, go on our blog, student page, you can read through very many stories of what our interns have been doing. And that's the best way to find out what internships, how psychic internships look like. Great. Um, perfect. Okay, so that's actually a really good lead-in um, for our next poll that we have. So let's pull that up. Um, this one, we just kind of want to get to know, uh, speaking of all the different ways that, you know, we try to provide information for you, um, we want to know what social media platforms do you use most frequently slash prefer? So Becky, um, can you watch that for us? Mm -hmm. Great. So we've got Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, other. Uh, feel free to um, put in your answers and then go over those real quick. Let's see what everybody said. We got there 50% for Facebook and LinkedIn. That's fantastic. We update both of those really regularly. So if you haven't followed or liked us on any or all of these platforms yet, we really encourage you to do so. All you have to do is type in SciTech Experience um, and we'll come up anywhere on all the social media platforms. Um, so we post regular updates about what the companies and interns are doing. Um, these are great ways to see examples of internships that you might love or just to see what's new and what's happening. Um, so yeah, we'd love to see you follow us there to get more updates in kind of the areas where you are naturally. Um, but enough self-promotion. Uh, tell me, Norbert, how can I get the most out of the SciTech Experience internship? Good question. So remember, you set internship goals at the start of your internship. So now it's time to revisit those goals. Mm -hmm. uh, make sure you start building your portfolio of the work that you're doing. Explore your field of interest by taking on challenging pro projects and ask as many questions as possible. 
it's your good time to network with professionals in the field. So take time to build professional relationships by observing the good relationship builders in the company and learn from them. And remember, internships can be your route to full-time job. So maintain good professional ethics and make sure you learn more from your team. Great. Okay, so here we've got another question from the audience. Um, this comes from Tommy. He wants to know, can I refer a company to the program? So for example, if he, if I'm understanding this right, because we've had questions like this before, um, if there's a company that he's already interested in, is it possible for him to get them signed up with SciTech? Yeah, that's a good question. And we've got, uh, we, we, once in a while, we get students refer companies to the program. The company has to just be eligible for the program, which means it has to be a for-profit Minnesota company. And uh, the employee count has to be 250 employees or less, and their work has to be a STEAM-related kind of work. So if the company is eligible and you come across that company, you can always refer them to the program. Perfect. Um, okay, so here's another scenario. I've had a great internship, but it's coming to an end. So how do I conclude? Uh, that's a very good question. So when you've had a very successful internship, it's a good time to exit to ask, to ask for an exit interview. An exit interview will give you a chance to have a review, receive um, a feedback from your hiring a company, and make sure you stay in touch, maintain your contacts as much as possible after you leave your internship, and connect to them using LinkedIn. That's a professional networking uh, platform for you. Mm -hmm. take, take time to say thank you and also make sure you say thank you to all those whom you interacted with during your internship, not just your hiring manager or your mentor. Make sure you just say goodbye to everybody that was involved in your, in, in your internship. Great. Okay, so um, Becky, do you want to check to see if there's any other pending questions in the question box there? Yes, we've got um, one more from someone who um, asks about what to do if they are sophomore with no real work experience in their major, how would they increase their chances of being hired? Yeah, so if you're a sophomore with zero work, work experience, real world work experience, understand that the program is designed to help you get hands-on experience before you graduate. And uh, this experience is experience that you wouldn't otherwise get outside the program. So your resume is your marketing tool. And if you don't have real work experience, your career service center will help you craft a good resume, highlighting your technical skills from your coursework as well as other soft skills that you may have got through volunteer work and participation in your student organization. Use Career Service Center, be persistent, and reach out to as many employers as possible. You may learn something if you're persistent and you reach out to as many employers uh, through the program. Awesome. Okay, so then I see uh, Becky's room. We've got one more question here. Uh, this is from Grace. And she's saying, I graduated last December with a chemistry degree can I still participate in the program? So Grace, unfortunately, the program is only open for students that are currently enrolled in their degree programs. So you probably can, well, you can for sure participate in the program, except maybe if you're planning to do a master's degree, once you enroll in your master's degree program, you can apply to the program again. Okay, and I think that's all the questions we have. Thank you very much, Piper, for and Becky for being part of this webinar series. Yeah, and as as we conclude, we have quick reminders. Always start with scientifictm.org. That's where we post all our exclusive job postings. And remember, choose keywords searching for the jobs and mark your jobs as favorites if you like them. We send periodic new emails alerts. So make sure you read those and browse through jobs. And remember, we don't make hiring choices, companies do. So reach out to as many employers as possible. And truth, treat this internship hat as real job hunt, because this could be a real stepping stone to your dream STEM career. Be persistent and reach out to us if you have any questions. We do campus visits with student groups, attend career fairs, and do different workshops. So if you want us to visit your campus, feel free to drop us a line. 
Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, everybody.